Exploratory testing. Manual testers or human testers superpower. Hey YouTube, it's the test lead. And today we're gonna to talk about mastering exploratory testing. If you're new to my channel, please feel free to subscribe. But now, back to the video. Personally, I think of it as manual testers or human testers superpower because it's an advantage that it has over automation testers. Let's dive deeper into it now. Exploratory testing is a software testing technique that emphasizes the tester's knowledge, skills, and intuition while evaluating the software's functionality. For normal testing, we have predefined test cases or test scripts. For this, we don't. Normally, when you're doing exploratory testing, you have limited or no documentation. So instead of relying on documentation and predefined test cases, you're gonna just explore the website or explore the software. And while you're exploring, you're going to simultaneously be writing and executing test cases based off of what you see. So if I'm on Apple's website and I explore, I say, okay, cool. There's a menu button on the top right. Let me press that, see what that does. Okay, that leads to a drop down menu. Now let me see what these menu items do. Let me click one and explore that. I don't have a predefined script. I'm just freely, wherever I see, I make sure that from a customer or any user's perspective, it's working as I expect. Because remember, manual testers are testing from an end user's or customer's perspective. This approach allows testers to think creatively, adapt quickly to changes, and identify critical defects or problems that might not be discovered through traditional testing techniques. So now let's talk about why exploratory testing is so important. First off, real world scenario replication. As I mentioned previously, you're testing from a customer or end user's perspective. Next, creativity and intuition. Sometimes with predefined test cases or test scripts, we strictly only follow what the requirements or the expected results say. But sometimes customers think outside of the box. So if you have the opportunity to actually explore the website, how a normal customer would, you may find different bugs or defects that weren't accounted for, that weren't thought about when test cases are normally written. Next, we have adaptability. In a fast paced systems and projects that you work on, sometimes test cases can become outdated. So instead of always rewriting, then rerunning, rewriting, rerunning, and having a never ending cycle, you can, for a cycle, just exploratory test because you're testing what's most current. And last but not least, my favorite part, this complements automation testing. Automation testing is wonderful at repetitive tasks. That's where automation testing shines. But automation testing requires predefined test scripts. So if something changes, that means the test script for the automation test case must change also. So it's not just free to every run or instance change. But with exploratory testing, which is why it's a manual or human testers superpower, with every test with exploratory testing, I can try something new. I'm not stuck or limited. Whatever I see fit for that testing cycle, I can just explore and test. And that's why it complements automation testing. For automation testing, if it's redundant, it'll shine. But for something new, that may be only tested once or twice. Exploratory test or manually tested. Now, let's talk about some of the steps 
to properly carry out exploratory testing. Understand the software. Before diving into exploratory testing, testers must gain a thorough understanding of these software's requirements, functionality, and expected behavior. If documentation is present, use it. If not, you can use your own knowledge of similar software along with asking other people who may be familiar with it. So let's say the software that you're testing is for cell phones. You can say, well, other cell phone companies test like this. If I click on a cell phone, I should be able to pick a color or storage size. So for our website now, it's got the same functionality. And I'm using my previous knowledge on other websites to say, okay, this should work like this on a current website now. If I add an item to my cart, my cart should be updated to have one item. I'm using my previous knowledge from other websites that have shopping carts on this website now. Create a test outline. Define a test charter, which outlines the objectives, scope, and areas to explore during the testing session. This helps maintain focus and avoid wandering aimlessly. So if I'm on a website, I want to make sure that I don't just go down a dark hole on random pages. I want to say, okay, for this testing cycle, I'm going to focus on the shopping cart feature. That's my focus for this testing instance. That way, I'm not wasting time aimlessly on random pages. Test design and execution. Begin a testing session exploring different features and functionalities. Testers should note down their actions, observations, and any defects found. So while I'm exploring, I'm saying, okay, I added this item to my shopping cart. I'm writing it down, I'm taking notes. I'm documenting what I'm doing for my test and the result from my test. Okay, was item added to the cart? Yes. Okay, it's working as expected. Prioritize defects. As defects are discovered, prioritize them based on severity and impact on the application's functionality. If I'm using the software or a website and every time I'm adding an item to my cart, the website crashes. That's pretty bad. That's pretty important because if a customer can add items to their cart, customers can't spend their money. If customers can't spend their money, our company can't make money. So that's very important. That'd be a high priority bug or defect or problem. Time management. Set a time limit for each testing session to ensure focus and efficiency. Avoid spending excessive time on a single area and keep the testing session dynamic. This is self-explanatory. You don't want to spend four days on one part of the website and then there's only one day left of testing. You have the whole website still left to test. Budget your time efficiently. If you have four days and eight parts to test, budget it so that two parts a day you're testing. Collaboration. Encourage collaboration among team members during exploratory testing. Different perspectives and insights can lead to more comprehensive defect discovery. As I mentioned previously, part of exploratory testing is using your intuition. My intuition and ideas may be different than somebody else's. So by collaborating and getting other people's ideas, we're getting more test coverage. Feedback and retesting. After the testing session, share the findings with the development team. Retest the resolved defects to ensure they have been fixed 
successfully. So as you can see, exploratory testing is a very valuable testing methodology, especially for manual and human testers. It's the main positive or your superpower against automation testers and automation testing. Because in exploratory testing, you can freely explore. For automation testing, I have to have predefined test cases and test scripts that my automation code will run. And for teams, having both exploratory testing for testing new things on the fly, as well as automation testing for testing redundant things, we get a lot better test coverage. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you need help on your QA journey, check out my book, QA Must Know Vocabulary, as well as my course, The Manual QA Academy. And most importantly, do not forget this, learn something new today.